Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord God. Tonight is a wonderful night to give God thanks for the blessings that he has given up to us as a person. I thank God as people we are created to worship him. Tonight I have my husband with me. Another time, Pastor Audrey Evans in the house. We bless God. We bless his holy name. On Bible study this evening, it shall be different dispensation for God's children. Different dispensation of God's children. And scriptures that we'll be using is Joel 2 and 2 Timothy 3. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is a song that we would like to play this evening. It's from the Harvest Music. And it's the topic is I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. Here we go. Yes. Your 
Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's the name of the Lord, God. Praise the Lord. It's good to be back here this evening once more with you, dear saints and friends that have been listening to this broadcast over the air through, uh, through television and radio. May God richly bless you again as you open, turn your radio, your radios on, your television or whatever you're looking at. May God bless hearts as we go on. To the word of God, I just to be like these scriptures that came to my mind this past week concerning instructions that was left by the apostle and also the prophets of the Lord. And by doing, I would like, by the help of the Lord this evening, 
<clears throat> excuse me, to enjoy these wonderful scriptures, instructions, wonderful understanding, and the children of God that uh, knows what it is to serve the Lord, they will take it and allow the Holy Spirit to help them to imbibe these words in their heart uh, by the counsel that I will be reading tonight. I have to also take it for myself and allow to help me to function and operate under these uh, protection. This is an umbrella for the souls of men that the Lord put down for his children. And so we are under the umbrella of God covering. And so this evening we are so grateful to come again to share the precious words of God. The first scripture that I will be uh, taking up here this evening and speak on is Second Timothy chapter 3. It's a very, very, very vital. I was led to go this fashion. And by going this way, I know the Lord will uh, bring a blessing to the hearts of his children. So I'm asking everyone that are listening to keep your hearts open. Let the Holy Spirit uh, speak to you. Or if you are not a safe person, ask God to help you and understand. And uh, the understanding will come. Because it will help you to understand. And so the first scripture that we'll be reading is 2 Timothy chapter 3. We are going to step into the first verse. And this also know that in the last days, perilous time shall come. Yeah. It, is, it is exactly uh, a counsel. It's an exactly, uh, you will call uh, an instruction or in the days of the prophets, they call it warning. And we have to take thought of uh, the time that we are living. And because the Lord is interested, because the, 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 why God is, is interested, the scripture that said, for God so loved the world. God loved the world. That's why he allowed all these scriptures, these understanding, to be the last and the time when it was uh, translated from the Geneva Bible into the English vocabulary, and the King James took it and enhanced it and sent it out and broadcast it. And all those people that translated, they died because of this. We are so grateful. The word of God, nobody can put it down, shut it up. You're burned today. You have, a, you have a million come up some, some other time. And so we are so grateful for God's word because it's a lamp to our feet and a light to the pathway. Paul said, perilous time shall come. And truth, it is your time. It was in the day of, uh, of the children of Israel. Perilous time was there. And uh, here today, we can say, yes, perilous time has come for us. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. And isn't, isn't it that true? Very true. Because there's a lot of folk go on. And call, I like to say that people call them pastors. Call themselves ministers, reverend and doctor so-so. These names are not, I, I, I'm not interested in these names. My, my main intention and desire is to serve God, reverence him. And use my godly fear to submit myself unto him. And as I, as I speak to these uh, you saints that are out there, may you see the, the things that I'm saying unto us here as the broadcast. It's for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covet us, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. The unholy is un, unwholesome, not sober, not having great confidence. They take this unholiness is they are confident in unholiness. They practice unholiness and this lead on ungodliness, unlike God. And this disobedience to parents is children will not listen and absorb the counsel of their parents. 
And but as Paul makes mention of this in Ephesians, it, uh, the, that uh, the children must be obedient to their parents. Not only that, children of God that are children in the church of God, in the fellowship, they have to learn obedience to their leader. Because they, lead, they are like children in the house of God. And sometimes some of the, the people that call themselves Christians, they, oh, they go up until after pastors, until good and plenty. This is not how the way you are supposed to do it. You are supposed to be humble. When Jesus said, except a man become a little child. A child is a way that Jesus was pointing out there. The childish action is, is a child to submit. Listen, imbibe, and practice what you're told. It's not that a puppet. No, whatever is being dished out. What we are reading here tonight is being dished out for every child of God that found the Lord. He said, do not follow blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Don't follow them because we lead to ungodliness and on, on, on awesomeness and God will not be pleased. Verse 3 said, without a natural affliction, true breakers, people do not want to hear you tell them the truth. Uh, you, you will speak it, and sometimes when you speak it, they think that you're against them. No, but the truth is truth. Whether it's truth for me, truth for you, and when you have your spirit, love truth. Will always embrace truth. Uh, you, you will not always listen to things that are contrary but because there's a practice in your spirit. Love truth and truth always lift you up. Truth always stand with you. Truth always leads you into the right path. And because when we have a, a spirit of truth, when we hear truth, we can imbibe truth. Because truth, no matter how you take truth, it's truth anyhow. No matter how you put it, it's truth anyhow. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, incontent, fierce, despise of those that are good. These are the kind of words that the apostle used. And to show his people, I'm glad I'm reading it today. Because it enhanced my spirit and. Because I am born in sin, you are born in sin, we all are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. And in iniquity we were conceived. We are born and we come, we come out the falling nature. And it's always going to be here. But God allow us to be with the falling nature. That he can work on us even though we have a falling nature. He can speak to us with the falling nature. And teaching us how to control that falling nature. Hear from him. And when we listen to him, that falling nature will be under subjection. Be our captain of our domain. Amen. So true. So God is depending on God's children to take a hold of me, you, and see ourselves. When we can see ourselves and follow the counsel of the word of God, there's going to be a great blessing for God's people. Because Paul Dick mentions continuance in well-doing. Seek for glory. Seek for immortality. Seek for eternal life. When we keep on seeking after that, it, we don't seek for it today. And it don't come. We seek for it tomorrow. We seek for it next year. We seek for it. Always keep on seeking, going after the things that God wants us to go after. And this is going to take us into eternity. This is what the Lord wants. Amen. That's why he sent his disciples to, to strengthen the church of God. Traitor, hey, high-minded, mm -hmm. love of a pleasure more than the lovers of God. All the things of the world. Children of God is more so for God's people. And of those that are not saved, these are the kind of things that God expects when we give ourselves to the Lord. We are not to follow, follow the high-minded people, 
lovers of pleasure are more than lovers of God. Some uh, fellowship that you go on into, uh, sometimes you can't feel the spirit of the Lord That's around oh. because they live for the flesh, live for self, and showing how they can dress and how good they are. I'm not looking at that. He made you exactly how he wants you. So we don't look at that. Hey, high-minded. We don't we don't follow those. I'm a form of godliness, but not the power dear from such turn away. And you can find God's spirit in your fellowship. You have to find out from God self, what is this? What, what am I going into? Mm -hmm. When you can hear the word of God preach in its totality, you don't hold back the, the whole covenant, you don't hold back the new covenant. You and join them together. Don't find fault with something you don't understand. Seek how you can do and make it fuse together and blessings of God because God knows what he's doing. And I might send you out and give your word. Amen. And when we can give the word, it's for, a, it's for a reason. We don't have to ask God why you give me the word. No, give the word. Do what you have to do. The, the rest of, uh, of blessing will come. And you, sometimes you don't see it, but God knows. You see? So he said, from those people that follow the unrighteous living, turn away. For, for of this sort are they which creep in houses and lay the captive sea women, lay in sin, away with diverse lust. It's not, this is not only, the days are so evil. And these are not only for leading uh, silly women, the captives. They're also led, uh, led away. When he follows here, what I say, men and women. Mm -hmm. Men and women together. Silly, foolish. And uh, uh, you, 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 you don't follow the things that are right. Uh, ever learning. Are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What is showing uh, us tonight? He said, Come on, take the word of God, always learn, and not ever learning and cannot find truth. Let your spirit reach out for truth that you can get the understanding how to overcome. For he that will come, I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I hope came. And sat with my father in his throne. Jesus came and he gave he lived life. And he said, The prince of the power, the prince of this air, cometh and findeth nothing in me. He has no control. He couldn't find a mistake in the life of Christ. Nothing in him. There was not a falling nature in the Lord. He was a champion through his life. And Jesus came, being a champion, kept the law that we can live our life. Through him and be a champion. Yes. You don't have to be how your parents were. You take on. There's a challenge from the moment you grow up, educate, and understand the language. God expects you to do, improve yourself, stand upon your feet. Because the opportunity is there for every man. Amen. Praise the Lord. And here it is. Verse 8 said, for now... As Dini and Jamboree's, which stood most, so these resist the truth. Men of cor corrupt minds reprobate concerning faith. Who is Dini and Jamboree's? Those men that stood against Moses. Dini's and Jamboree, those of those people that came out with him and found him. On the way in the natural. And they found a, a show, Paul, and, and as the story, because God uses the Jewish people to be a mark. Now, let me say, why did, if you ask yourself a question, why did God never give the infilling of the Holy Spirit in the time of the Jewish nation? You know why? Why God told Adam? Thou shalt not eat of that food. Everything else you got. It was a probationary period that Adam was going through. And from the moment he can be a champion, and he did not being a champion. That's why we're in this position. But the knowledge of God is increased in everybody today. God is so good. 
God is so good. He allowed it to, to come down to our dispensation that the knowledge of God can be dispersed on his people to show you can be a champion. Hallelujah. You can be. You don't have to be like anybody else. You can be different. And when God did not give them the Holy Ghost, they had to prove not only priest, not only uh, the prophets, but also the common people that look right around. They should take hold of the word of God. That's why they allowed the enemy to creep into Jerusalem. And God said, let me lift my hand of mercy. Devastation to Jerusalem. To prove to them there is a God in Israel. And it's the same thing in the church today. We have to be careful. I still to God how we walk, how we talk, and how we do things. You see, so he's the Paul that is really uh, speaking out to his people and is speaking out to us. Paul is not here today. The words are here. Why the words are here? God preserved the words for us. God let the word and the word that we are reading, it's alive and it's well. And we follow the words that is left. We are going to be champion. We are going to have the victory. But uh, they shall proceed no further, for the fight shall be manifested unto all men and, uh, and uh, as uh, there also was. So in other words, what Paul is saying, they, they, they after a while, you see people not going to continue because of the evil deeds. God's going to stop them somewhere. Yeah, but who love but thou hast fully known my doctrine of my life, purpose, faith, suffering, charity, and patience. The thing is this, that he uses this word and he personalized it. He said, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. There is a word for every child of God that God gave them. And Paul is showing the people that called me and sent me. And there's a doctrine that I have personally. It's not doctrine of the flesh. It's a doctrine that he stood on, the word of God. And it, he made it personally apply to him. And so it is. According to the word of God, it becomes my doctrine. My word. Because it's his word. But I apply it to me. For it is a doctrine manner of life. The purpose. We, when we come to the Lord, he gave us a lifestyle. He gave us a chance to live a godly lifestyle, our uh, purpose, faith. So in, in other words, Paul is saying that increase faith that you want, ask God, and he will help you. You are born the measure of faith, but you need an increase of faith. God help me increase your faith. Long-suffering charity, which is love and patience. Continuous in well-doing. Be patient. God will bring it to pass. Sometimes you want some things, we don't get it. Wait, pray. Wait and pray. Wait and pray. And sometimes God wants us to keep on asking. When we don't said seek. Seek sometimes is deep prayer. And if you don't get it, he said, knock. Hallelujah. Make a pound on the door. Mm -hmm. uh, make a commotion at the door mm -hmm. of heaven's door. And it will come to pass. You see? Uh, Persecution, affection, which come unto me in Antioch, Iconium, Lystra. The persecution I endure, but out of them all the Lord delivers. Praise the Lord. So if God can deliver him, he can deliver us of our persecution. Every child of God, there are a certain amount of persecution we go through. Sometimes his wife persecution, sometimes his children persecution, sometimes his church persecution. If you believe it now. Sometimes a child of God says, See, you don't know what's happening to you, but he started to say things about you. The enemy sends somebody to be an enemy to you. So, here, these are the kind of things that happen in churches. Yea, and all which live godly, Christ Jesus, shall suffer persecution. God. But evil men and seducers shall walk worse and worse. Uh, deceiving and being deceived. You see, one of the reasons because they are deceived, they become deceivers. See, that's why truth is there mm -hmm. to help us to ride 
And the Holy Spirit help us to ride on truth. No matter how truth come, it's going to lead us and lead us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. But continue now in the things which thou hast learned as being assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. You see, when you have a lifestyle, Paul is showing Timothy, listen, Father, my son, and the child, God has called you now to be practical with you. You've got to have, follow the lifestyle. You may get problems, but you, you, a, you have a truthful lifestyle. You have a steady lifestyle. God has helped you through, and he will help you through to the rest of the way. Just follow on. Just live in truth, and you're going to find out. God start to speak to you because the life that you live, God can speak to you because your mind is made up. God can show you things even in your dreams. Your mind is made up to move on. When you have that lifestyle, that godly lifestyle, that godly lifestyle push you on. It's not you that's going in. It's God helping you and putting you on. Because the flesh itself, for the flesh is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. But God, to that godly lifestyle, God will help. He told Timothy, he said, come on, man. I, I showed you some things. Follow on. He said, don't follow me as I follow Christ. Listen, I have a human weakness. Don't follow the weakness. Father the Lord, Father, the God in me, you see, follow it. I don't, I will like my chicken one day. I like to, you know, to cook yours. I like to eat it raw. Don't, don't condemn me for that. That is how I do it. But don't watch that. There's something that God gave me. Take that and move on. Because you are in the falling nature and I'm preaching to you. I have the falling nature. God not going to use an angel from hell. He's too perfect. He can't, he can't preach the everlasting gospel. That's right. He uses his people to preach and teach his people. So Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He said, what I'm from, from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through the faith which is in Christ Jesus. And the word, the whole, uh, no, known the holy scriptures. The, the, the scripture, the writings of the holy and the holy scriptures, in other words, inspired scriptures, inspired writings of the holy men whom God called, chose, and lead out of darkness. And have given them, speak to them, show them. God inspired their mind. God wants to inspire our mind to take his word further. And sometimes when we he inspired our minds to take our words further than our family. You will be surprised the great things can be done. It's all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, able to make wise unto salvation the true faith which is in Christ. And in verse 16, it said, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God inspired man. If you say, How come they didn't have the Holy Spirit? God, they, it's a dispensation of time for every man. God did not want the Holy Spirit to be infilled in everybody. He want Israel to obey him. Let him be their king. Let them follow him totally. And here it is. If you want to know what's going on, Paul remind the people in Timothy to show the people in what Timothy was. He said, how oh, script, not some. All of the scriptures, it may not, you may not understand all of it right now, but later days you go understand. Mm -hmm. But still, all scripture is given <clears throat> by the inspiration of God. God touched the minds of the, of the people, of the people that He's using. He inspired them, He comes to them and touch the minds, mm -hmm. which is profitable. The, 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 the scripture make you wise. That prophet means wisdom. That prophet means understanding. That prophet also coupled with truth reinforce your mind with understanding with truth. Maturity. You can, that will be able to bring you to maturity. Prophet for doctrine, soundness, mm -hmm. for proof when you slip a little bit, Holy Spirit come back, Mind prick you and touch you as you stumble. 
You see, it's profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in the right standing in righteousness, in the right standing before God. So in other words, when you come and lift your hand, it's without wrath or doubt you're doing the right thing because you follow the scriptures that is written, that able, it's going to profit you something. Instruction in righteousness, that, uh, in righteousness, that the man of God, that woman may be perfect, mature. That perfect means human maturity. Okay, human lifestyle, godly lifestyle, truly furnished because all the understanding, all the words that you listen to, you imbibe, you incorporate, you love it because it's changing you. Ah, huh? before you do some things, you don't you don't do it again. You find out as you grow older and listen to the word of God. There's a life covering. There's a of a covering over you. You're so uh, like a little child. So uh, the, your, 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 your mind is solidified with the word of God. And it helps you uh, to come uh, to perfection. For the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So I say this to everyone here tonight. We are in this dispensation. God knows how to go over to different dispensation to do things. And what instructions we receive here tonight is to help us. Let us understand the people that wrote the scriptures. They are gone on for with a faithful heart. Paul said, I know my departure is at hand, but I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. An end for that is laid up for me, a crown of righteousness. No matter what happened to you. No matter what they say about you, no matter where they take you, they could throw you in the sea on your drone. My faith is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. No matter what they do to you or say about you, we are responsible to live that life that God can be pleased. Praise the Lord. Here we are going to go over into Joel uh, chapter 2. It's a precious little book that uh, we want to, to go into and uh, that book is very uh it's very unique in itself but we are going to see what the lord have for us in there it speaks of different things a uh, dispensation dispensation with different uh, kind of things there chapter two Joel, yeah, Joel. Joel chapter 2. Uh, yes, we are going to go from verse 1. Uh, now, because we are saved, because we are serving the Lord, at the time, the Lord spoke to Joel concerning uh, a work. Now, Joel was at a time when God was working with Israel at the time. And while he was there, God have his time that he had his people that he raised up in different dispensation. And we have to understand and see this thing. God is using people dispensationally. In every dispensation, God used to speak to his people in different stages to let them understand my people were before. I used them to speak people before and when i spoke to them i'm showing you that are now in this this dispensation i preserve the words from that dispensation to bring over into this dispensation to show my people that i have called how important they are because i want them to learn that brother that was dear from a different mother was dear i was using like how i'm using you here today 
So here God said, because I called you Joel, I gave you a name. This is what I want. This is a precious little name. This is a name that is, a, is above all the prophets. And he said, Joel, I want to tell you a show. And I want you to do something. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm in the holy mountain. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. God speak to his heart and show him how important he is and he was to the children of Israel. At the time he is to the children of Israel. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of cloud and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people, strong. There had not been ever like, neither shall be any more like it, even unto the year of many generations. This scripture is speaking a prophetical future event that will inspire or transpire in the future. You look at it again, and it's telling you, although there are the clouds of thick darkness, there's something going to with God's people is going to take place. A fight devoured before them. See them, different dispensation. God in the, in the future dispensation, God's going to raise the people to function greatly with a mighty hand. And Joel saw this. God want him to write it. He shall fire before them, and behind them a flame burning. And a land as is the, the garden of Eden before them. And behind them a, a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. Because the hand of the Lord, the power of God, is on these people in dispensation. If it is a dispensation for the future, God said, I, God, will raise up. The people to perform duty. This is not going to mystical. It's natural men and women like you and I. Like you and I. You see, when this natural men like you and I, like you and I, the appearance of them is like the appearance of horses, and as the horse, so shall they run. God's going to use some people in the future. And maybe in the past, God had used them to deliver somewhere out in Israel, somewhere there. But this is going to be yet for the future event. It's a lack of a noise. A chariot up on top of the mountain. Shall they leap like the noise of the flames of fire that devour the, the stub as a strong people set in battle and array? You see? So these are the kind of things that's going to take place uh, later on. That's coming down to a, I said, God is a dispensational God. He works in different areas, in different dispensation, different ways, in different dispensation. Before their face, the people shall be much pain and all faces shall gather blackness. Yes. They shall run like a mighty man. They shall climb the walls like a man of war, and they shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. So in other words, God is going to perform a duty. When they are not going to break their ranks, we are not going to have time to say anything about anybody because we are on one journey. This is God's choice. One journey to care, to perform the duty of the Almighty. Nobody's going to be able to stop it because God is in the vessel performing the duties of his work through his people. Oh, bless his name. So there won't be any time for anybody to find fault. There'll be no time everybody have a mind as they perform the duties of God. Nothing else. Let it all day. Trust on the patient walk everyone in his path. And when 
they shall upon the, the sword, they shall not be wounded. God is going to give divine protection. In other words, that's what I'm seeing here. If you have a, a cut or anything, immediate healing. Immediate healing. This is the power of God who manifests. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run up the walls. They shall climb up under the houses. They shall enter in out of the window like a thief. So in Irish, anything God wants you to do, you're going to be able to perform fully the purpose of God. The earth shall wake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. When God raised up his army, when God touched his people and caused them to stand up like a mighty warrior, Raise them up for the purpose because there are too many people that's on the face of the earth. Too much wickedness. My God. God is going to step in and do what he has to do. Oh, nobody knows who they are. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great and he is stronger than and executed his words. For the day of the Lord is great and every uh, and very terrible. And who can abide it? Who can be able to stand against it? God pick you up and send you somewhere and is using you. Who is going to be able to stop you? And this is not only, but it's a group of men and women together with the banner of God Almighty. It's it comes back to mind. You were taught us this before. Revelation 19, 11 through, mm -hmm. through 17, mm -hmm. through 21. Can mm -hmm. I read it, sir? Yes, go ahead. I remember you had mentioned it to us in previous lessons. Mm -hmm. Revelation 19 and 11 says, I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Mm -hmm. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Right. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Yes. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he had clothed with vest dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word, the Word of, of God. God. Yes. And the armies which were in heaven followed him. Followed him. So there is an army. Yes, yeah, God is making an army. Yes, he's making an army. We, army followed him upon white horses, clothed in. Mm -hmm. white and clean mm -hmm. and out of the mouth goeth a sharp sword yes that with it he should spite the nations right and he shall rule them with rod of iron right and he treaded the one press of press of oh, the fierceness yes and wrath of almighty god mm -hmm. and he hath on his bestia and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings. Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Champion. And our, Lord of Lords. Our champion, our Savior. Hallelujah. And our, our King and our Redeemer. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. Mm -hmm. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come, gather yourselves we together. We don't reach there yet. We don't reach there I need to teach on that oh, great oh, supper God. of the Lord. Great Let me leave it. I'm getting excited. Let me leave it, we don't get there yet. Continue Therefore, also oh, now the Lord turn mm. even to me, and I will uh, all, of all your, with all your hearts and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. There so is the I, time of chapter. Two, we are back in 12. Joel two. Uh, verse 12, yes. and they turn to me, turn come to Jeez, me, come. Hallelujah. And those people that go in the dispensation that God raised up, he said, turn to me and come. Don't worry yourself. You're trying to serve me and get in temptation. Just come and turn. You don't matter what people say about you. Come turn to me with fasting and prayer. And remember, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's your heart I need. I, I, I don't need your pretty looks. It's your heart. Mm -hmm. That's what I need. I don't need your money, your heart, I need. Yeah. And rent your heart, not your garment. It's don't take a hold of your clothes. I don't need that. I need your heart to be broken. That's what he's saying. And your garment under. Turn unto the Lord your God, 
for he is gracious and merciful, slow to hunger, and of great kindness, and he repented him of the evil. So in other words, these words are written for us. It didn't written for God. He said he repent him of, of, of his evils. In other words, he is going to come and move the evil away. You see, but the repenting there, he said, I will remove the evil away that giving you problems will come to your hearts. I will take away the evil because my covering will be over you again. Okay, because when we allow the enemy to step in one mistake, Jesus. it is a gate open. And when we can see ourselves in time and repent and ask forgiveness. The Lord says, I will abundantly pardon you. You see, who knows if he will turn and repent and have a blessing behind him? He will meet offering, drink offering unto the Lord God. Now, what God uses and he uses this terminology is because is he wants his people to understand when you are serving the Lord, he will provide in the natural as well as in the spiritual. So here it is. Though you the children and sanctify us, call a solemn assembly. Come, people, gather yourself together. Do the thing God wants you to do. Don't feel like you are so great that you can't submit to God. What God wants is people to submit and come to him. That's what he wants. He wants the sons and the daughters to come. Don't to the animals if possible. Yes. Come to him. Then he can bless everyone. You see? Gather your people, sanctify the, the congregation, assembly the elders, <coughs> gather the children, those that are sick, suck the breast, and, suck the breast, and uh, the, the bees. Let the, the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of the, the closet. So here, now, bridegroom from the chamber, let me spiritualize this a little bit. Let the bridegroom go out of the chamber, the bride out of the closet. Now, this is God meeting the Christ, the bridegroom. When we do these things and come to me, is to come out. The Christ is going to come out. What God wants us to do, what we do, is going to come out and meet his, his bride, the church. I'm spiritualizing. You see? Because when we submit ourselves to God and do what he asks us to do, he's going to come out and meet with us. Yeah, here it is. The out of the, the chamber and the bride out of the closet. So where you have yourself as church closed in, when you find yourself in the place where God wants you, he's going to visit the church. Step out and come to the church. I've heard your cry. I heard your prayer. Let the priest and the ministers of the Lord we be in the approach on the altar. Let them say, Spare ye people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to repose, that the Eden shall be over them. Therefore, shall so they say, Among the people, where is thy God? People, and what the prior there is, God is saying, when the people submit themselves to God, if people are going to say all kinds of things, but God will be then, then the Lord be gracious unto the land and pity on each people. And this is not speaking of Israel alone. It's speaking of the church today. Literal church today. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send, I will I will send your a corn and wine and oil, ye shall be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the Eden. This is also Israel on the church. This in church, save people. This is Israel and the spiritual Israel, literal Israel and spiritual Israel. But I remove from all the, the northern army. And drive him to a land barren and desolate, which is faced towards the east sea and is in the part towards the uttermost sea. And this and his thing shall come up, and his savior shall come up, because he had done great uh, things. Now listen, this 
this uh, what God is saying right now, there's a, a country by the name of Gog in the Bible and Magog, Meshach and Tuba. There's a country that evil is very rampant. And the country that is way in the east is a trouble. Demons are over there. Giving people trouble. Oh. So is that the northern army? The northern army. There is gun makeup. There is a country up from the North Pole. <laughs> Remember reading it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Way in the east, God said, I'm gonna deal with you. Gog and Magog. Ezekiel tells us about Gog and Magog. Meshach and Tuba. He said, I'm gonna deal with you. I'm gonna push you. And you all these things that you happen all these years. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm playing. You say Russia and China, God's going to deal with her. The Chinese is known as uh, sins. sins. It's in the Bible. Sins. I'm not going to deal with them. But what God wants his people to do is follow his words and obey him. And the time will come. He's going to deal with issues of these wicked folk. Look what they do. Fear not old. Be glad and rejoice. For God will do great things. Be not afraid of the beasts of the field. The pastures of the wilderness. Do spring for the tree. For, for the tree. Dear it or fruit. And fig tree. Uh, the wine uh, yielded uh, their strength. No, so in other words. They find their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord. Who are the children of Zion? The called out, chosen, selected, ordained children of Zion. Where is our Zion? The heavenly Mount Zion. I will look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. I know that there is a Zion for me, Mount Zion, which is in the heavens, that Paul spoke about there. Psalmist too. Yes. Great is the Lord. Yeah, yeah. To it, be it, yeah. In, in, in Mount Zion. Side of the north. And be glad, the children of Zion, and rejoice in the land. Your God, for he has given you former rain moderately, and it will cause, uh, cause to come down from uh, for you. The rain and the farmer rain and the latter rain in the first month. The, the floor shall be full of wheat. And the, the, the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore, I will restore you the, the years that the, lo the locust had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the pommel. Harm, a uh, great arm which is I uh, sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And, and praise the name of the Lord, your that are uh, dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed, never be ashamed anymore. And ye shall know that I am the, in the midst of Israel, that literal Israel. Natural Israel, spiritual Israel, in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord God, uh, none else, and uh, my people shall never be ashamed. It shall come to pass after that I will pour out my spirit upon our flesh and sons and your daughters we shall prophesy, and old men shall dream dreams, and young men shall see vision. The thing is this that what we have to do is continue and continue in well doing. God has his time, not in man's time, but God has his time. In his time, God never, God never poured out the spirit on Israel. It's only the prophets that receive that spirit. David and the kings and the good kings and prophets receive that spirit. But the children of Israel had learned to listen. 
God was working with a dispensation to learn to listen. And the same thing with this today. God is teaching us how to learn to listen. And to bring our minds together. Focus on his word. You can go to your work. You can become rich, but focus on him and his word. If you have your money, that's fine. Keep it in the bank and in the pocket. Don't put it in your heart. If riches increase, set up my heart. And he said, God said, I want the heart. God said, I need the heart. But God said, I want the heart. God, when it's all over, you'll get old. You're going to pass away. Who's going to get it? Somebody is going to get it. Live by it. That's fine. But you raise up good people to get, get your wealth that they can expect and honor it. You see? So this is what I will open servants and up the, the unmade. Upon the servants and the unmade, these days will pour my spirit out. So now I work with you. God said, I'm going to bless them. And I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire, a pillar of a smoke. The sun shall not turn, the sun shall be turn into darkness and the moon into blood before great and terrible day of the Lord. This is the same scripture what Pastor Charlene was reading. These are things we're going to go through later on. Great Supper of the Lord. We are going into the Great Supper of the Lord. One time in the book of Revelation, different places. In Ezekiel, different places. In Daniel. And these are the things we are going to go through. Come by that whoso shall call upon the name of them shall be delivered. For in Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered, as the Lord had said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. God bless you here tonight for sitting down and listening to these words, the counsel of the words. May God help you to imbibe these words and truths that is coming from the word of God. All God's people need is truth. All God wants from his people is their heart to believe truth, walk in truth as he is in, 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 in light and truth. That's all God wants from his people. He don't need your money. It's your soul he needs. It's your heart he needs. So whatever seems to be contrary in this reading of scripture here tonight to God's people, don't be afraid of asking questions because the answer is to be given. Praise the Lord. And sometimes a lot of people don't preach the whole, the whole testament. They say it's past. It's not past. There are things that to be fulfilled. And the same way Israel was going through trouble is the same way the church today goes through trouble. Same way. People lie, thief, and everything in the church. One pastor said one time while he was ministering and he was looking through the camera, people still the sun running out. They don't. He said, but you must admit, there's a camera in the church. It's because I would minister that I don't call police and lock you up. You're stealing the things that is here for the saints. <laughs> it's the same thing with Israel, same thing in the church. We have to watch ourselves that we lose those things we do. Whatever we build ourselves in, don't lose it. The experience you have, don't forget, take it with you in the Christian journey that you don't make the same mistake again. And it's going to help us to be an overcomer. God bless you this evening. May I shine upon you and give you peace. This evening, Father, we thank you for your people that stand and listen. Father, bless the hearts. Open their minds, Lord. Help them not to question too much, but ask questions. Truth of your word. Lord, your words are truth, no matter how it comes. It is truth to the hearer that listen and the one that imbibe. The words of God, no matter if people don't believe it, still stop. It's truth anyhow. But help you people, Lord. Stand with them. Be with them, Lord. Give them peace in their heart. Give them satisfaction with their spirit. Lord, we ask you to open their minds every time. And that I can see the truth that coming forward. And I bless you this evening. Be with them, we pray. Bless them, Lord, immensely. And my God, keep them from falling. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Hallelujah.